All right, got a no cooling call here at a house we haven't been to before, but we've been by it about a thousand times. We worked on this same street, so let's find out what's going on, try to get them going. All right, let's get some gauges. I don't see anything real bad going on here. I mean, that sub cooling is just a hair low, but uh, probably calling for a 10 or so. Let's see. 12, actually. They say they have very little airflow in the house. We might better take a look at uh, see if we can see what's going on. So it's going to be down there in that basement. So they said they had really weak airflow. Came down here and this filter was sucked up in it, not fitting correctly. Although it looks like it should fit, it had just bent up and sucked in there, but it's not dirty. So I don't know if they just took a dirty one out and put that in it, you know, recently or what. Sometimes you can look in the trash can without saying anything and they'll, you'll see it. And that certainly sounds like the blower is running at full capacity. And these ECM blowers, a lot of times they like to be, uh, you know, intermittent with their problems, but not seeing anything as of yet so let's keep looking and by the way I did, I did look in this and just wasn't real bad you know as far as the coil I mean there is some dirt enough to cause a bad problem so I'm wondering if this drain's been clogging up and this is shutting it off and on let's see what we got okay sounds like the condenser just turned off the blower kept running so these float switches may be wired into the yellow. That's pretty bad. Although I don't think that's I don't see anything floating up there enough to cut it off, but boy, look at that. What in the world? I don't know how it could be that much mud. It had to have soaked in from outside or something. I don't know how that much dirt could come out of the air handler. Something done about that, regardless. Thanks to our buddy Shannon, I wear my sunglasses at night. 
I have personalized easy trap brushes. some water through it and see how well it comes out and pour it down into the pan internal pan you see it's not really coming through very strong it's coming out down here Can a unit get that much mud in it? All right, a little bit of a clog in there. We got it to quit. Crank that down a little more and should be looking through now. Stop dripping into the pan. So let's go see what kind of temperature we're getting. three in the house up top or at least that's what she told me so let's pick up our toys and go look again at the outside unit and check another couple vents All right, regardless of the drain, low suction, high subcooling, those don't go together. So we got high subcooling, high superheat, low suction, normal if not high head pressure for this condition today. So we know we need a valve. So after all that mud in the drain, regardless, the refrigeration system has an issue. Let's see if we can get a valve. All right, called Baker. And sent after this valve. I pumped it down while it was on its way here. It really is nice to have a parts runner. And there's no way to keep 
every part for every brand. Now, most of the train stuff we would have in stock for, for almost anything. Um, yeah, comes with pretty much what you need. There's the clamp for the bulb and it even comes with a tiny zip tie. So the unfortunate thing about carrier and ICP and all is you have that little small tube that you have to unsweat and re-sweat in the coil. But we'll make that happen. Surprise this came out of the plastic with no caps. No cap on that end. It was it was in a bag, but Hopefully this hasn't been opened before. But thanks to Baker, they did have the part for their unit that we needed. So let's open this thing up and see what it's like. Okay. This is gonna be about the only usable filter situation here. There are no uh, good filter grills in the house. And these things just fold up and suck up into it. So that thing is pretty sturdy and I'm glad she still had it. And so I said, yes, I suggest you use that have to either get that thing out of the way or make sure it stays bent up to where you can get the filter all the way in. That's kind of to keep it from sucking up on the end, but this one really won't because it has that frame, so it's washable, reusable deal. Looks like we're going to need to clean that a little bit. Oh lord, look at that flat spot. That is a big flat spot. Let me see. Two of them. One right back there and there. About three inches wide and eight or nine inches tall. Two spots. So it looks like that thing got sat on. I don't know what did that. That definitely doesn't help at all. All right, so let's get our drain line out of the way and get this thing off. unsweated that no problem now you've got to unsweat that little thing and be sure you got to be careful doing that you don't want to pull on it until it's completely flowing and then you don't want to pull on it when it's too hot if you get this little tube too hot you'll break it or something so this this one is a this one is a be careful one here when you're taking it out 
So you want to try to heat the big tube until you see the solder or the braze flow on the little tube and the big tube. So you've got to be careful on this one. What I should really do is put a smaller tip on this, but I'm just going to try to control the flame better. And it's really hard to try to concentrate most of the heat onto the big tube and not burn the drain pan, but that drain pan to the left side, we don't really need anyway. successfully got it out you can see the little butt tip the little uh, bevel you can see the little bevel there right at the tip of my torch and of course the new one doesn't have that bevel I don't know if that's a actual bevel in the tube or if that's just a piled up piece of braze you know people call it solder but anyway We got that out so let's get this thing off and let's get the new one in okay just gonna take my wedge and snibble my way in there get that piece of junk out of the way So that tells you it was factory and that nobody had put a valve in this before. They're usually not going to be that neat if they do, but they sure not going to have that factory looking Jimmy Wiggler there. Or whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna stick this on there kind of loose and just let it hold itself in place while we try to get this little tube in. Like I say, there's no bevel on the end of it right there. So you gotta really be able to see what's going on So, got to be sure it's in there. And the way I've bent it, I kind of got it where it sprung, but yet not touching all the way to the other end, deadheaded. So it's safe to have it in that position. So you can see that that's pushing it all the way to the other end, pulling it out and letting go, and it springs its way in. So I've kind of shaped it like a spring and got it to where it holds itself in. Now I'm still going to try to mostly heat this tube. And there's the flat spot right there for the bulb. I'm going to try to mostly heat this tube and get that welded in, brazed, soldered, whatever you want to call it. And uh, then we'll let it cool down really well before we, before we clamp the bulb down to this flat spot right here. And, uh, and we'll just try to re-weld this same ninety right here back in the valve. So 
do one thing at a time here. Now there'll be enough braise, or salt, or whatever you want to call it, silphos, left on the pipe so that you can see it flowing and you know when you're good. You don't want to get that little pipe cherry red for long anyway. And even if you're up on each side of it, you get the big pipe red and get it flowing. You know your little one's going to be flowing enough. Okay. So you pretty much know at that point right there that you have got it covered. And that little small tube is brand new clean copper, so it it really flows well on it. So let's see. So we'll do a nitrogen test before we evacuate it, and that definitely will tell us that that braze right there is good. It's Hard to see the bottom side of it. I guess I could take one of those little mirrors. Somebody probably stole mine anyway. So let's finish up the rest of this. I think I'm gonna let that cool down before I start yanking stuff around since that's such a small tube. Couldn't find my wet rag, but I've got the other. I mean, I couldn't find my red label wet rag, but I've got this. So I don't know what I don't know what the difference is. Maybe one's just older or newer or something. But I'm gonna take a little bit of this and go around this valve here. And see if I can protect it. From the harsh element. Known as the torch. Hopefully the wet rag, it worked a bit. Get the bulb mounted. And these really do work. A little bit of a pain to put on with it uh, being up in there like that. And I usually settle for getting one bolt in it. 
and nut, but the, oops, the, uh, the shape of it right there is designed to hold the nut, it gives you a square nut that lays in there. That way the nut doesn't turn when you try to tighten the bolt or screw, whatever you want to call it, from this direction. But you got to quit throwing the nut on the ground. Or you may actually lose it. So what I usually do is try to guesstimate what hole I'm going to need it in. And, you know, go ahead and get the bolt in it out here, outside of the area that it goes in. So I think it'll be in that, that second hole. And then once I uh, have it in there loose like that, I'll go ahead and slide it back in here into place. And try to manipulate the bulb into the spot it goes in. I'm going to tell you one thing about this, and you guys ought to not be too hard on yourself to try to make this look exactly factory, because I know, you know, that's everybody's first instinct, is to try to make it look like it hadn't been worked on. But this particular thing right here, the way these tubes are configured and where they run to and the shape of them and all, really doesn't affect anything but the looks of it. I think I'm going to pull out and go one more hole down tighter, but uh, that's really all that affects is what it looks like. It doesn't affect function. And if you think about it, you know, they probably don't have the pan in their way. They don't have any of this stuff in the same configuration that we're having to work in in the field. So to get a replacement part to look exactly like a factory part, that's gonna be pretty hard in some cases. And when it comes to this particular situation right here, don't be so doggone hard on yourself. Now you do want to make sure to turn it to where nothing can rub the small tube. It looks like it's going to be a pretty good spot right there. And thank God they give you a nut driver slot there instead of making you use a screwdriver like some of the older ones did. But this thing will actually squeeze it pretty doggone well. And as you're tightening, just reach around and feel everything and make sure nothing is tightening into an area you don't want it tightening into. Yep, so nothing is touching the two tubes or nothing from the bulb is touching that other tube. And these things are designed to break pretty easy. 
So if you just bend back and forth, the excess will come right off out of your way. And then you can take some tar tape or the original piece if you really want to and go around this to insulate that bulb, which is something that you definitely need to do. So before I do that, I'll show a quick shot of the fact that it's mounted pretty tight. We did put the band back on. So while it may not look exactly factory because of the way these loop around, it's not hurting anything. As long as none of these small tubes are in any kind of stress or rubbing against anything. And that's good and firm. So I'm gonna wrap this up with what I call tar tape. It's like a cork thing now, but I'm gonna insulate that and get this closed up. Oh, well, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning on this first as well. See if we can clean that up a bit. Okay, got the tar tape on it. Now this stuff sticks to itself pretty good and pretty much permanently, but I always stick a couple of zip ties around it. I mean, what's it cost you, you know, 10 cents or whatever. And you really can't even see the seam anymore where they overlapped. So it's probably fine just like that. I'm just gonna stick one around it and put it back together. Okay, so don't want them too tight. This one goes over the band and you know, so they're just, they're tight, they're snug, but I don't even know if they're even doing anything. Just a little backup. This one especially, that one might not be doing a lot. A couple more teeth out of it, but. So let's put this thing back together. Go fire it up. All right, got the washable filter back in it and the door back on. The coupling in it. So I'm gonna go grab a uh, little bit of tape, fix this armor flex back. Vacuum is already running. So let's go see where we're getting with that. Okay, had a little bit of help out here from the homeowner, so. Kind of rude to film in front of them, so I don't usually if I can help it, but uh, got it back up and running. We're going to need to top it off a little bit. I didn't think we lost any charge at all, but I don't really know where it was due to the fact that the valve was bad. Now, it's only been running about five minutes, and uh, he's gone in to start checking all the vents to see if they're putting out cool, which they probably should be by now. But we're going to get that subcooling up to where it belongs. Superheat may come down a little more. We add some more charge to it. Say, what is it calling for? So it's actually calling for a 12. So we got a ways to go on the charge. But anyway. If I can get another shot of it or not, uh, if it comes back out, I probably won't, but we'll try. Okay, this is why you always let it run about 15 minutes before you try to charge. Everybody picks on me for charging so slow. I mean, there's none out here. I have not put any gas in it. Everybody always picks on me for charging so slow. And I have not added any. I let it run about 15 minutes. We're up over 10. And we need 12. So, but it looked a lot lower than that a few minutes. Here we are approaching 11. The valve is definitely working. 
She's moving. It actually looks pretty good. It just might be a tad low. It just goes to show you, you gotta let it run. You got if you know you're low, you can you can throw some in it and and get up a little bit. See now we're up above 11. Up above 12. Twelve point four, twelve point five, six. She'll start coming back down. Here she is. I think I'm going to leave this one alone. I don't think I am going to add any. I, like I say, we didn't lose any when I pumped it down. She was grubbling and growling pretty good right there at the last, but I got it all in there and pumped it down. So we're going to leave this one alone. Everything looks okay. I can get this. That's a spot where we can see everything at once. There we go. I think we're going to leave this one right where it's at. Line temperatures look good. Might be a little bit low on airflow on this thing. But I'm going to leave it alone. 